We're here with Brother Michael Diamond of Most Holy Family Monastery. Can you tell us about your research? We're going to get in as far as the abominations that are going on right now. We have abortion, as you can see the pictures here. Uh, 55 to 65 million surgical abortions each year. In China alone, there are 14 million each year. Uh, so that's an abomination. We have artificial contraception being practiced by most uh, peoples of the earth. And then we have other people that try to scientifically limit their families. And so this is a, a great abomination uh, before God. And of course, for women, as far as in 1 Timothy 2.15, uh, St. Paul says a woman is saved by childbearing. So it's an extremely important part of a woman's vocation. But I want to go into the agents and start exposing them and get on with this. Uh, the main agent, I think, today that's really deceiving people and putting them in a trance, like a zombie-like trance, and it's played everywhere you, know, you go, is rock music. Uh, it's, everyone has it on, everyone listens to it, some form or another. And people don't really realize the true significance of uh, this music and really who is the one who's not only promoted this, but these, even these musicians, who's using them and speaking through them. You have underlying influences then in this rock music. Exactly. What we have is, and, and people have proven, from the 50s to the 90s, going back to Elvis in the 60s, the, you know, the Rolling Stones in the 70s with uh, Led Zeppelin in the 80s and Michael Jackson now Madonna, all these people, if you really look, and maybe we have a separate video just on this, they all say in their own words, uh, that they're possessed by demons, spirits, they get their music by spirits, and so forth. And, and uh, I want to give you a couple of quotes to prove this. Alex Young, guitar for the group ACDC, said in the 1985 issue of Hit Parader, quote, Someone else is steering me. I'm just along for the ride. I become possessed when I'm on stage, end quote. Uh, Madonna, who's the most popular uh, modern uh, performer right now, uh, said in, this is in the calendar magazine, LA Times, May 5th, 1991, Madonna was asked a few questions. She said, this is the question, uh, near the end of the film, we hear one of the people on your tour say of you, she's very unhappy much of the time. True? Madonna answers, quote, I certainly was not happy." Question, but why? When you're out on tour, aren't you doing what you love? Answer from Madonna, quote, I'm a tormented person. I have a lot of demons inside of me. My pain is as big as my joy, end quote. And we have many other albums that are openly satanic. Uh, these are rock uh, musicians. This is Prince's album, as you see on one side. Uh, if you now you turn it upside down, you get 666. I mean, the words evil at the bottom, and that's police. Police's album, you get 666 when you reverse it. So it's pretty open. And much of the music is satanic forwards and openly. What we're going to look at right now is some of the music that, if you play it backwards, reverse the music, you get these satanic messages. And what most people don't realize, they think, well, they did that somehow. It's impossible. It's impossible to play a song forwards and then play it backwards and get a message. You know? so, and some of these songs we're going to be looking at right now are live performances. And we're going to play a couple now. The first one is from Electric Light Orchestra's album El Dorado. And the segment played forward here, it says, I'll sail away on a voyage of no return to sea if eternal life is meant to be. Backwards, the same section says, He's the nasty one, Christ, you're infernal. Uh, next song is by the group Queen. It's called Another One Bites the Dust. It's one of the most po uh, popular songs in all of uh, uh, music history, and they keep on repeating Another One Bites the Dust over and over again. And when you repeat Another One Bites the Dust, you get this. Start to smoke marijuana. <laughs> That's next, pretty incredible. Yeah, it's, it's uh, something. And we're going to look at a couple more. The next song is from the group Cheap Trick. It's from the album Dream Police, and the song is called Gonna Raise Hell. So there's some significance already. So during this song, Gonna Raise Hell, you play it backwards, and you get a section that says, You know Satan holds the key to the lock. <laughs> The next song we're going to hear is by the group Rush. 
It's a live, a live version of the song Anthem. And backwards it says, Oh Satan, you are the shining walls of Satan. I know you are the one I love. listening to is a group Led Zeppelin and the song Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven is uh, when you're in, oh yeah, when they do the top 100 or 500, it always usually comes up as the number one song. But what's interesting about Led Zeppelin, in fact they dominated the 1970s and they're still popular today. In fact they outsold groups like the Rolling Stone 3 to 1. It's interesting that their lead singer, uh, the head of their group, uh, is a big follower of Aleister Crowley. Uh, Aleister Crowley was a Satanist, a man who called himself the Beast, 666. In Stairway to Heaven, there's quite a bit of uh, Satanic uh, stuff that's, that's backwards on these songs. The first part, of it, we're just going to uh, take a few sections here. The first section, this says, And your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Backwards, it says, Because I live with Satan. That same section. Uh, another section, uh, he says here, the piper's calling you to join him. And the piper, of course, is Satan. The piper's calling you to join him. Backwards, that same section says, the Lord turned me off. Now we have, uh, he's going to talk about the two paths you can go by, and you can always change the road you're on. Now, the same section, that all that those that you just heard. Now we're going to play that whole section backwards and we're going to take it piece by piece. The first part of that section played backwards says, To my sweet Satan. Next he says, I want to live it backwards like the Zep, whose power is Satan. Now when he says, that, when he's saying the Zep, Zep refers to Robert Plant. He referred to the group Led Zeppelin as the Zep in interviews for years and years. So what he says next here is I want to live it backwards like the Zep, whose power is Satan. And then he says at the end at the end of this is he will give you give you six six six. Is that like the mark of the beast? So give us the six six six. The beast, the whole the beast system, man as God, and that's that's what we have coming. So it's it's pretty open. And this should uh, obviously make people believe in the devil and believe, obviously, that these uh, singers are being used as instruments of the devil, uh, that the spirits are working right through them. And they should not, obviously, listen to rock music after seeing something as clear as this, that they're, they're devil speaking right through these guys. And people have to realize that we're in a, a spiritual battle, as St. As Paul says in Ephesians 6.13, that you fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and wickedness in high places. So... That's what people have to realize. Now, the main enemy is Freemasonry. Freemasonry claims it tries to make good men better men, and it accepts only men of high moral character, and it's a charitable, benevolent, educational, religious society. They seek to improve the community. But what they fail to tell the people is that Masonry has another pur purpose. It's completely unknown to much of the public and many of the Masons. Manley P. Hall, a 33rd degree Mason, said, quote, Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity, an outer organization concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect. Uh, so there's, you have the invisible societies, a secret fraternity. So there are those who know a secret and those who don't know the secret. Uh, and more than one way, deception is practiced on the initiates of the blue degrees. The blue degrees, as we're going to mention, the first three degrees of Masonry. Uh, he's told that nothing he's about to do will, will conflict with his religious or personal beliefs, but he's led phase by phase through a series of blood oaths, uh, never to reveal the secrets of Freemasonry. Uh, this, these are blood oaths for a secret organization that, uh, as we're going to see, is, is, is diabolical. 
So the Mason begins his Masonic career with the first three degrees, the three degrees of the Blue Lodge, entered apprentice, fellow craft, and master Mason. If he wishes, he can stop Masonry after he's finished those first three degrees and call himself a master Mason of the Blue Lodge. If he wishes, he can continue up the York Right Ladder or the Scottish Right Ladder. In the York Right, there are another, another ten degrees in the York Right, and if he completes those extra ten, he can become what he, and call himself a Knights Templar Mason. And if he goes up uh, the Scottish Rite ladder, there are another 30 degrees in the Scottish Rite. And uh, basically, once he completes the blue degrees, he can buy the fourth to 32nd degree of the Scottish Rite if he has enough money. It's basically that. So many of the individual degrees, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, the whole initiations, all the things that are said in, in those, each of those uh, degrees, some of the Masons that are even 32nd degree Masons haven't gone fully they're called exemplified degrees. They haven't gone fully through all those degrees because obviously it takes a lot of time. But my, many of the Masons do know what I'm going to say when I reveal some of the initiations of each of these uh, degrees. Uh, the book, Duncan's Ritual of Freemasonry, gives a word-for-word -word transcript of the first three degrees of the Masonic Lodge, the Blue Lodge. In the first degree, the uh, initiate is asked the following question, what do you desire? In the first degree, he answers light. In the second degree, he answers more light. In the third degree, he answers further light. Uh, now, Albert Pike, who's probably the most famous Freemason of all time, he was a Mason who simultaneously occupied three different positions. He was the head of Washington, D.C. Masonry, he was the head of American Masonry, and he was the head of World Masonry. Albert Pike wrote the book Morals and Dogma. It was published in 1871 and is used in all Scottish Rite initiations to explain the craft's philosophy. It's been called the most important book of, of Freemasonry. It's been called the Bible of Freemasonry. And it's, been, it's given to every uh, fourth degree Mason, uh, this book. And it's also recommended in every issue of the Scottish Rite Journal. Each month it recommends to get and read Morals and Dogma. Uh, Albert Pike says in Morals and Dogma, quote, The Mason is familiar with the doctrine that the Supreme Being is a center of light. Now what is this light that the Masons are talking about? The answer can be found on page 321 of Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. Quote, Lucifer, the light bearer, Lucifer, the son of the morning, is it he who bears the light? Doubt it not, end quote. And on page 324, he repeats the thought. He says, quote, a devil, the fallen Lucifer, or light bearer. He identifies Lucifer as being the devil. And, of course, uh, you know, St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11:14 14, the devil will transform himself as an angel of light. So, uh, the New Agers believe the same thing as the Masons. Uh, David Spangler, a need, leading New Ager, wrote, quote, The light comes from Lucifer. He is the light bearer, end quote. And many people say, many Masons even say, Mason, Freemasonry is not a religion. It's not a religion. It is a religion. Albert Pike said on page 213 of Morals and Dogma, quote, Every Masonic Lodge is a temple of religion, and its teachings are instruction in religion, end quote. Some more information from Albert Pike. Now, on July the 14th, 1889, Albert Pike issued formal written instructions to the 23 Supreme Councils of the world. He said, quote, To you, Sovereign Grand Inspectors General, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degree. The Masonic religion should be, by all of us initiates of the high degrees, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. Yes, Lucifer is God, and the true and pure religion is the belief in Lucifer, end quote. Uh, on page 276 of the book called Ku Klux Klan by J.C. Lester and Bill Wilson, it says that, quote, General Albert Pike organized the Ku Klux Klan after the Civil War. So he also started the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, to also get a degree that the, the Masons, their leading Masons, believed the light bearer was Lucifer, Manley P. Hall, another leading Freemason, wrote the book The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. Uh, his book is recommended in a reading list of what you should buy your Masonic relatives. And on page 48 of his book, The Lost Keys of Freemasonry, he says this, quote, When the Mason learns the key is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, end quote. So the Masonic writers are telling the Pope they conceal a, a worship of Lucifer from the rest of the Masonic Lodge is according to the Masons that Lucifer is the light bearer, and the Mason who figures it out has discovered the secret. So basically that's what we have. They are not only worshippers of Lucifer, 
but they also are antichrist to such an extent that if a worshipful master of the Masonic Lodge allows prayer to be made in Jesus' name, his lodge can be closed and his charter revoked by the Grand Lodge of a state. Uh, now, uh, this information was taken from a Jeremiah film special, uh, where they interviewed former Masons and former people that are involved in witchcraft. And uh, here's some interesting parallels in what these men said separately. They're interviewed in different states and different uh, countries, some were from Canada, some from the United States. But look at the parallels here. In Blue Lodge Masonry, to become a Mason, you have to be recommended by another Mason. In witchcraft, you have to be screened and recommended by someone currently in witchcraft. In Masonry, you are blindfolded and bound by a rope. In witchcraft, you are blindfolded, bound by a rope, and led to the edge of the magic circle. In masonry, a sharp object is put to your left breast, and you take a blood oath what to expect if you re reveal any of the secrets of the lodge. In witchcraft, a sword is put to your left breast, and you take a blood oath not to reveal the secrets of witchcraft. In masonry, during the ritual, the blindfold is taken off the candidate, and they tell you that you are in darkness and you're coming into light. In witchcraft, during the ritual, the candidate is challenged by someone at the edge of the magic circle who says, who goes there? And the answer is one from the world of darkness. In masonry, the masons end their prayers with, so mote it be. In witchcraft, they end their prayers with, so mote it be. Now we're going to look at a few of, uh, we're going to look at the York Rite of Freemasonry. Uh, in the York Rite, they claim only Christians can join the York Rite. In particular, what we're going to look at is the Holy Royal Arch Degree of the York Rite. According to Jim Flanagan, and other former Royal Arch Masons, in the opening and closing of every chapter of a meeting, the High Priest asks another Royal Arch Mason, he's called the Companion Captain of the Host, the question, quote, are you a Royal Arch Mason? And the other Mason responds, I am that I am. This refers, of course, to the time when Moses was approached by God, and God identified himself as I am. And uh, God said that this is my name forever. And of course, our Lord said in John 8.58, he says, I am, uh, referring to, they asked him who he was. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Uh, in masonry, they say that the name of God has been lost. In a later degree, in the royal arch degree, the seventh degree, the name that was lost is now found. The men form an arch with their arms and say that God's name is Jabulam, which is the joining of Jehovah, God's name, with the pagan gods Baal and Osiris. And according to the Royal Archmasons, they call this the Grand Omnific Word. Now we're going to look at the Scottish Rite. In particular, now we're going to start out with the 17th degree. And this information is taken from Scottish Rite, Masonry Illustrated, Volume 1, pages 453, 456, 457, Ecook Publishing, 1974, just to prove that this is just not something we're making up. Here's what the initiation is. Having completed the initiation, after revealing the password, Jebulum, and the sacred word, Abaddon, the senior warden conducts a candidate to an elevated canopy to the right of all the others present. This is supposed to represent the end of the world and so forth. But what's most fascinating about this degree, the 17th degree, is the sacred word of the ritual, Abaddon. If you look in your Bible in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, you'll find out who Abaddon is. He's the angel of the bottomless pit. He's a demon. So the sacred word of the ritual, the 17th degree of Freemasonry, is the name of a demon. So he's invoking a demon. Uh, the Masonic 18th degree is a mockery of the sacrament of the Eucharist. In the 19th degree, it's called the degree of Grand Pontiff. Another Mason during this ritual anoints the candidate with head, his head with oil and says, quote, Be thou a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, end quote. In the 20th degree, they say, quote, No man has the right to dictate to another in matters of faith or belief. No one can say that he has possession of the truth. In the 28th degree, uh, the symbol, uh, this is for the, the degree Knight of the Serpent, it has a snake biting its tail. And what looks to be a friendly person, but you look in, as, as it looks in the reflection here, as you can see in the water, if you turn around, it's a demon. And that's important because Albert Pike says, quote, that which is above is as that which is below, end quote. In the 30th degree, the, uh, it's called the Knight's Kadosh, the, the ritual reads like this, the Grand Master rises and says, imitate me. He then stabs a skull crowned with a tear representing Pope Clement V and says, quote, down with imposture, down with crime. Later he stabs a skull surmounted with a regal crown, supposed to represent King Philip of France, saying, quote, down with tyranny, down with crime. 
The master and the candidate then kneel before this, a skull adorned with a laurel wreath. It's supposed to represent Jacques de Molay. And they say, quote, everlasting glory to the immemorial martyr of virtue. In the 30th degree, the initiate repeats both of these, demonstrating his hatred for the Catholic Church and any form of monarchy. So they're against the church and they're against the state. Right. Exactly. And wanting to bring, bring down all forms. Of, that's why the monarchies were destroyed in Europe. Yes, absolutely. This is a certificate for a man who completed the 32nd degree of Freemasonry. Notice the words at the top, order ab chaos, which means order out of chaos. Uh, on the 33rd degree Masonic jewel, the Freemason has the same things written here at the top, order ab chaos. Uh, the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., which is where Freemasons get uh, receive their 33rd degree. Uh, and you can't seek, if you're a 32nd degree Mason or any type of Mason, you cannot seek to be a 33rd degree Mason. You have to be chosen to be a 33rd degree Mason. But the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C. is where they receive the initiation of the 33rd degree. As you can see right here, the 33rd degree House of the Temple in Washington, D.C. has serpents all over the inside. As you can see above, has concealed swastikas above it. Uh, the 33rd degree House of the Temple is exactly also 13 blocks north from the White House. Uh, the whole city of Washington, D.C. is laid out Masonically. You can see right here, including the pentagram, which is a five-pointed satanic star, comes right down on top of the White House. Uh, now, an expose of the 33rd degree initiation was done by a former uh, Mason, 33rd degree Mason, Paul Rosen. It can also be found in uh, Edith Starr Miller's book, Occult Theocracy, on pages 363 and 364. It says on those pages that part of the initiation, they claim that three murders of mankind are law, property, and religion. It says this, quote, Neither law, property, nor religion can be imposed on man as they annihilate him by depriving him of his most precious right. They are assassins on whom we have sworn to wreak vengeance. They are enemies against whom we have declared war to the death. Of these three enemies, it is on religion that we must concentrate our most deadly attacks. Once religion is dead, law and property will fall to our mercy, and we shall be able to regenerate society by founding on the corpses of the assassins of man, Masonic religion, Masonic law, and Masonic property, end quote. According to the Congressional Record of September 9, 1987, it says that no less than 60 members of the House of Representatives are Masons, and about 75 congressmen are Masons. The following senators are 33rd degree Masons. Alan Simpson, Wyoming, Robert Byrd, West Virginia, Strom Thurmond, South Carolina, Lloyd Benson, Tex, Jesse Helms, North Carolina. He's claimed to be Jesse Jesse's. Helms? Yes, right. 33rd degree Freemason. And there are many other senators that are regular Masons, like Grassley from Ohio, Iowa, and Specter from Pennsylvania. And uh, 1996 Republican running mates, Bob Dole and Jack Kemp, are both 33rd degree Freemasons. Another so-called conservative, who many people thought was conservative, is Barry Goldwell. Uh, he's also a 33rd degree Freemason, and uh, this is proven by the, this magazine called Royal Archmasonry, Volume 11, Number 8, states right here that Goldwater is a 33rd degree Mason. And there are a number of other congressmen that are Masons, but we don't have time to get into that. Uh, some other notable Freemasons who belong to the black-only Prince Hall Lodge include Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall, who voted uh, pro-abortion on the Roe v. Wade decision. Atlanta Mayor Andrew Young, Detroit Mayor Coleman Young, uh, Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley, and Dr. Benjamin Hooks, the NAACP. Now, what's very important is uh, the pentagram is an, an important symbol to Freemasonry. In fact, the, the Eastern Star, the Winds Group, their symbol is a pentagram. But many people don't know the difference between a star and a pentagram. But the Masons themselves know the difference, and they tell us what the difference is. In the book called The History of Freemasonry, written in 1891, this book was written by a series of 32nd and 33rd degree Freemasons. On page 49 of the book, it says this, quote, This star represents good when represented with one point upward. And the page reads on, let, let me remind you, these are high-ranking Masons, quote, But when turned with one point down, it represents evil, all that is opposed to the good, pure, and virtuous, end quote. So the star with one point down is evil, and the Masons have it on the cover of this Bible. The eastern star is a pentagram, as I mentioned, as its chief emblem. 
And it's always been, the pentagram is one of the biggest symbols in, in Satanism, and probably the biggest. And as you can see right here, this is a clothing line right here. It's called the New World Order clothing line. By the way, they also uh, had, as you can see here, first of all, as a pentagram on the guy's uh, uh, side there. Uh, what's interesting is their, their advertisement, they, they talk about uh, order coming out of chaos for the New World Order clothing line. Uh, the colors, again, are very interesting, black, red, and white, because they're the colors of the Nazi party. And the Masons declared in the writings that the colors of the Royal Arch, the Royal Master Mason degree are black, red, and white. The Masons have created many groups, such as the Eastern Star, we've mentioned, has the pentagram for the symbol, the Demolay, which is for the young men of Masonic members, the boys. The Job's Daughters, or Rainbow Girls, for the young, young girls of the Masons, and Prince Hall Lodges for the blacks. And the Shriners are a special group of Masons made up of 32nd and 33rd degree Scottish Rite Masons and 13th degree or Knights Templar York Rite Masons. The Shriners claim to be a charitable organization, yet the facts prove that isn't the case. Only one third of the Mace money raised by the Shriners goes to charity. The Shriners also wear red hats called fezes. Interesting story about the Fez, because the Fez comes from uh, Morocco, which is in North Africa. You can look it on your map. Uh, and in the year 800 AD, 50,000 Catholics were slaughtered there by Muslims. And they said the blood ran so thick that the Muslims dipped their hats in the blood, and their hats turned red. And it's been a 1,200-year sign of Muslims' victory over Christians. And it was first commercially sold from Fez, Morocco. And uh, the Shriners were... Fezes. Now, the, sh the Shriners uh, tell us w why they wear the Fez. This is in a book in 1977 put out by the sh Sabar Shrine Temple. They say this in the book, quote, The Fez has been handed down through the ages as one of the most significant headdresses. The Fez derives its name from the place where it was first manufactured commercially, the holy city of Fez in Morocco, end quote. Also, during the initiation ceremonies of the Shriners, they, quote, seal their solemn oath in the name of Allah, the God of our fathers. A little later on in the ritual, they, quote, they acknowledge, quote, Islam as the one true faith. And uh, you can ask some guy who claims to be a Catholic or a Christian, that, that how can they do this, you know, that, uh, saying Allah is the one true faith. They also have on their calendar, the Shriners' calendar, the Order of Quetzalcoatl, which is pretty interesting because Quetzalcoatl is the stone serpent which Our Lady of Guadalupe came in Mexico to crush, and she converted 8 million to the Catholic faith by means of those apparitions. Uh, some of the papal condemnations against Freemasonry, so that people know that Freemasonry has always been condemned by the Church. Leo XIII says, quote, Let no man think that he may, for any reason whatsoever, join the Masonic sect if he values his Catholic name and his eternal salvation, end quote. Uh, under the old code of canon law, anyone who joined the Masons was automatically excommunicated. Leo XIII said, quote, To join with these men, Freemasons, or in any way to help them cannot be lawful, end quote. And cooperation between Masons and Catholics could be done only under the strictest of conditions. Leo XIII says, quote, Those men are like those whom, according to the St. John the Apostle, hospitality and greeting should be denied, end quote. In all, there are more than 200 documents issued by the Vatican that have condemned Freemasonry. You know, Pope Clement XII in 1730 also began the ipso facto excommunication of the, uh, anyone Absolutely. becoming, but he also gave an ipso facto excommunication for anyone who associated with the Masons. Right, exactly. It's, uh, you know, that's that's the, the severity of what we're talking about. It's, 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 a, very, it's, a, it's a big crime. People have... Uh, you know, less than that, and of course, we're going to show a little later that they fully infiltrated the Catholic Church, too. So, now, some of the Masonic statements against the Catholic Church, because you have a, a lot of Masons and others say, well, they're not anti-Catholic, and many Masons don't know this. But, you know, this all gets back to our the main root of our problem. Most people don't know what we're talking about here, and, and of course, Hosea 4, 6 in the Old Testament says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. So, uh, because they don't know is, is not going to help them too much. They're, they're still uh, going to be held accountable because it's still evil. Uh, some Masonic statements against the Church. Uh, the Masons used to call their official magazine the New Age magazine, but when the New Age movement got a lot of bad uh, publicity, they changed the name of their magazine to the Scottish Rite Journal because of all the negative things being said about the New Age movement. 
is the official magazine of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, and it says in, in the Scottish Rite Journal, quote, Catholicism, not communism or socialism, is Masonry's immediate worry. The French Grand Orient gave utterance to the following profession of faith in 1885. It said, quote, We Masons must aim for the complete destruction of Catholicism. A chief in the Masonic Alta Vendita Lodge proclaimed, quote, Let us conspire only against Rome, end quote. In the stone inscription of the Masonic Grand Orient and Supreme Council of France, it says this, quote, The fight taking place between Catholicism and Freemasonry is a fight to the very death, ceaseless and merciless. So, and what most people say is if you want to destroy the church, and if you're against the church, and you believe that the church is the true church that Jesus Christ established, why not infiltrate it? And they have infiltrated it. This is a copy of the May 8, 1991 edition of Mount Washington Press a paper near Cincinnati, Ohio. It talks about how the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, Ohio sends all possible candidates for the priesthood to Joseph Wicker. Joseph Wicker is a worshipful master of Mount Washington Masonic Lodge number 642 in Mount Washington, Ohio. That means that he's the president of the Masonic Lodge in his hometown. Mr. Wicker says that he no longer considers himself a practicing Roman Catholic, but practices what he calls Rosicrucian experiments. The Rosicrucians are a Masonic-like group that says everything should be guided by the use of reason. They've been officially condemned by the Catholic Church, and Mr. Wicker also says he believes in reincarnation. So Archbishop Polarczyk of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, Ohio, has a Freemason screen all the candidates for the priesthood. Many people say then, well, obviously the church looks to be infiltrated, and, and uh, the communists also tell us that this is the case too, that, that they were, were told by Moscow to infiltrate the Catholic Church. Mr. Manny Johnson, a former official in the Communist Party in America, gave the following testimony in 1953 to the House Un-American Activities Committee. He said, quote, The Communists discovered that the destruction of religion could proceed much faster through the infiltration of the Catholic Church by Communists operating within the Catholic Church itself, end quote. Mrs. Bella Dodd, who spent most of her life in the Communist Party of America and was Attorney General designate had the party won the White House, after her defection from the Communist Party, she revealed that one of her jobs as a Communist was to encourage young radicals into the priesthood. And she said that before she left the party in the United States that she encouraged more than a thousand young radicals to infiltrate the seminaries and religious orders of the Catholic Church. And she said back then they had risen to the highest places in the church. And so this is why you don't have any call to conversion, you have no exposure to Masons. And what I'm saying should be said by almost every priest in the United States and throughout the world. It's not said because these people are either direct infiltrators or they just don't care anymore. It's a complete apathy as, as far as uh, uh, the true faith. This is an interesting uh, picture we have here. This is a grade six catechism. It was given to uh, sixth graders across the country. And uh, you can see right here the little dots, the dark dots on this. Uh, this is the opening page, as you can see. This is Christ, this is Christ with us. And you have these dark dots all over the page. And of course, the communists are trying to achieve victory over the church, and, and uh, you can see the dark dots. What's interesting is you line those dark dots up, and what do you get? Looks like a hammer and a sickle. Communists, hammer, and sickle. So what they were saying was that they've now achieved victory over the church, and uh, at least they think that. And uh, we know if there's there's just even a small group with one true priest that upholds the one true faith. That's what St. Athanasius said. Even if the true remnant was reduced to a handful of true believers and say one true priest that believed in the true Catholic faith, they remain the true church of Jesus Christ on earth. So, And he said back then, St. Athanasius during the Arian crisis, that we have the faith, they have the buildings. So there's a definite link between Freemasonry and communist philosophical thought patterns. Yeah, yes, exactly. and. Uh, we're going to see now is, this is according to the book uh, book by G Dr. James Wardner, Unholy Alliances. He says that Mr. Jim Shaw, former 33rd degree Mason who left Masonic Lodge, says that when he became a 33rd degree Mason, when he was initiated in Washington, D.C., the House of the Temple, he uh, there was someone there, uh, an internationally prominent evangelist, was there to uh, help him through his initiation and present there, who was none, none other than Billy Graham. So... Uh, one of the biggest uh, evangelists, you know, Bible uh, preaching yeah. uh, religious figures, Protestant figures, is a Freemason. 
Well, according to that book, that's that's what it says. So uh, that's that's what he put in the book. That's what he claims Jim Shaw said that, who was there. So that's interesting. Uh, another person who I hope he's if he is a Mason, uh, he's come out of the lodge. Uh, but Pat Robertson, there's there's a Masonic symbol called the lion's paw. It's like this, and uh, that's a Masonic symbol. And Pat Robertson, and this is the cover of the Time Magazine, February 17, 1986 issue, he's given what looks to be the Masonic sign called the Lion's Paw. Uh, Pat Robertson also, in his book, The Millennium, has a point within a circle at the, virtually every page of the book. And the point within the circle is definite occultic language for sun worship, and it was also chosen for the symbol of the Illuminati. David Yallop, in his book, In God's Name, An Investigation of the Murder of Pope John Paul I, he builds a case of the P2 Masons were involved in the murder of John Paul I, who served 33 days. We'll see a little later in the tape how significant and important the number 33 is to the Masons. Yallop says that the P2 Masons have interlocks with the Mafia. Maybe that's because both groups have the same founder, Giuseppe Mazzini. And Mazzini said, quote, Our final end is that of Voltaire and the French Revolution, the destruction forever of Catholicism, end quote. Some other churches, such as uh, the Church of Mormon, Joseph Smith, the founder of the Church of Mormon, was murdered by the Masons on June 27, 1844. And the reason why is because Joseph Smith, who was a Mason, revealed the secrets of the Masonic Lodge in the Temple Endowment Ceremony. It's a ceremony in the Mormon Church, and they have the aprons on now still, and so forth. They're very similar to Freemasonry. The Masons also use a Masonic timetable system. They don't use A.D., they use AL. Uh, AL is their, their standard of uh, calendar system. Uh, it means Anno Lucis, and that means in the year of light. It could also be interpreted to mean in the year of Lucifer. So 4000 BC would be 0 AL, and 2000 AD will be 6000 AL, or 6000 years since Lucifer was cast from heaven. And that system lines up because this is a picture of a Distinguished Achievement Medal awarded to C. Fred Kleineck, the current Sovereign Grand Commander of Freemasonry, on May Day, 5990 AL, which is 1990 AD. And you can also find AL at the, on the cornerstone, uh, and, and at the engraved date of any cornerstone laid by the Masons. And I just mentioned May Day on that coin. May Day is very important for the Masons. We'll find out a little later why. The Masons definitely believe in symbology and numerology. And they have a fascination with the number 33. I believe they had major events happen on the 33rd degree latitude of the map. Masonic Encyclopedia says that Charleston, South Carolina was selected as the first home of the Council of the 33rd degree Masonic Lodge. And Charleston, South Carolina is right under the 33rd degree latitude of the map. Other major events that have happened on the 33rd degree latitude, it's where the first nuclear bomb was dropped, uh, tested, Trinity Site, New Mexico. And the monument chosen to commemorate this site was an obelisk, which is a Masonic symbol, a phallic symbol. The 33rd degree latitude also passes over both Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. These sites were the place where the first two bombs, atomic bombs, were dropped at the end of World War II. It's a known fact of history that we didn't have to drop the bombs because Japan was trying to surrender, but the bombs were dropped anyway. And these two cities were where the two largest population of Catholics were. The man who dropped these bombs on these Catholics was 33rd degree Freemason Harry Truman. Truman was a 32nd degree Mason when he dropped the bombs in October of 1945. He became a 33rd degree Mason. And Truman said, quote, Although I hold the highest civil honor in the world, I have always regarded my rank and title as a past Grand Master of the Masons as the greatest honor that has ever come to me, end quote. But the most astonishing incident that has occurred on the 33rd degree latitude of the map as it passes over the city of Dallas, Texas, where on November the 22nd, 1963, JFK was assassinated. In Dealey Plaza? Where the president was shot, the president passed an obelisk that is located right in front of the school book depository on the street, Elm Street, where the president was shot. There's a small plaque, which has always been on that obelisk, saying this, quote, Within this small park was built the first fraternal lodge in the state of Texas. So the park in which JFK was shot was the place where the first Masonic Lodge was established in Texas. Now, there are two views of history. There's an accidental view of history, which people believe that there's no plan when events, major events come about. There's nobody plotting or planning to bring about something. 
when some major events happen. And then there's the uh, planned view of history, the conspiratorial view of history. Uh, that people plan to have certain things happen to bring about something. And obviously, uh, it's very clear, I think, that, it's, that history has been guided uh, by the planned view of history, that people have definitely planned to bring about something. And in fact, FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, said if anything happens in politics, you can bet it was, it was planned that way. The Oklahoma bombing, as well as Waco, happened on April 19th. According to the satanic calendar of high days, April 19th inaugurates a period of blood sacrifice to the beast, culminating on May 1st each year. May 1st is called May Day to the communists. And May 1st is the day when the Illuminati was started and why there is always a large military celebration in Russia. Now, going back to Freemasonry, modern Freemasonry is given its name by Joseph Levy on August 25th, 1716, and approved on June 24th, 1717 by the first official Freemasonic Lodge. They chose masonry because it would act as a thick veil over the secret origin of their foundation. But what we know as Freemasonry came most recently from the Order of the Knights Templar movement in the 1300s. Actually came before that, in the year 43 AD, from a group called the Mysterious Force. That's actually where Freemasonry came from. And this following information is, is from a book called The Origin of Masonry. The Mysterious Force was established in 43 AD, and it started when a counselor to King Herod Agrippa came to him and complained that the followers of Jesus had a mysterious force, and that they should establish their own mysterious force to combat this Christian mysterious force. And this, the purpose of this group was to attack the teachings of Jesus and in order to preserve Judaism. King Herod Agrippa said, quote, We will use the hammer because it was used to nail Jesus' hands and feet. Every session will be open, open by striking the hammer three times, end quote. And you notice that judges have the hammer to bring order to the court. King Herod Agrippa said, quote, We will make degrees. These will be 33, symbolizing the age of the imposter. And on November the 43 AD, the first official session was held in the first temple of Jerusalem, which was a basement in the palace of King Herod Agrippia. The meeting of the mysterious force was always held in the temple. That was the name, the temple. And in 1717, modern Freemasonry changed it to the name of Lodge. To prove that Masonry is of Jewish origin, we'll hear the following quotes. The rabbi Isaac Weiss wrote in 1855, quote, Masonry is a Jewish institution whose history, degrees, assignments, signs, and explanations are of Jewish nature from beginning to end, end quote. The Jewish historian Bernard Lazare wrote, quote, It is evident that there are only Jews and Kabbalistic Jews in Masonry's origin, end quote. And finally, Theodore Herzl, the founder of Zionism in 1897 in Switzerland, said, quote, Masonic lodges are established all over the world to offer us help to achieve our independence. Those pigs and non-Jewish Masons will never understand the final objects of Masonry, end quote. So they're just useful idiots. That's it. That's exactly what's happening. Now, to find out what Jews believe in, then, we have to go to what they regard as their authority in religion. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 12, we read, quote, For the majority of Jews, the Talmud is still the supreme authority in religion, end quote. So, the, and the Talmud is the written uh, word of the oral tradition of the Pharisees. The Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, page 637, says, quote, The ultimate authority for orthodoxy is the Babylonian Talmud, end quote. And the Jews have embraced the Talmud for 20 centuries. Uh, now, some of the things that are in the Talmud, we're going to repeat just a few of them. I'm not saying all Jews know what's in the Talmud, or all Jews support what's in the Talmud, what I'm about to state. But nevertheless, it's there, and we have to repeat what's in exposed. What's, what's in the Talmud. In the Talmud, the, the Catholic Holy Day is called the Day of Evil. A Christian church is called a House of Evil. It is permitted for Christians to be defrauded and deceived. All Christians, including the best of them, should be killed. These are just some of the things. that We, we don't have time to go through all the Antichrist parts of the Talmud. It's unbelievable what the, what's in that book. Now, the Jewish Encyclopedia gives a person a definite view of perhaps hundreds of rabbinic statements on subjects. Giving, giving accurate summaries of what the Talmud generally teaches. Page 619, the Jewish Encyclopedia, Gentiles are not called men, but barbarians. Page 172 of the Jewish Encyclopedia, it says that Christ is in hell, punished with boiling hot excrement. And uh, this is what we have here. And uh, basically, the uh, Talmudic Jews are the main force bringing about, the main power. There are many tentacles of this arm. 
uh, many, but the main power is uh, the Talmudic uh, Jews are bringing about this Antichrist kingdom. Uh, also in the Jewish Encyclopedia, there's no criticism of socialism or communism, and there, in fact, they say that they're instrumental in founding and making socialism flourish. In fact, Jewish international bankers financed the Russian Revolution, and uh, now we want to look at some, and in Russia itself, you talk, you talk about the people leaving Russia before, say, the 1980s and Glasnost and Perestroika, 15 years of hard labor was considered a light sentence for a Gentile caught trying to escape uh, Russia. That was before the 1980s. In Israel, now let's take Israel, uh, under Israel's present anti-missionary law, 5738 passed on December 25, 1977, if a Christian is caught giving a New Testament, Testament to an Israeli, he may face a jail term of up to five years. Notice the date on that law, December 25th, Christmas. Uh, now let's take a few Jewish publications from the 20s and the 30s to find out what the Jews really believe. Okay, we're going to go back to prove that we're not just bringing up some current day wild wacko uh, Jewish publications. March 15, 1923 issue of Jewish World stated, quote, fundamentally Judaism is anti-Christian, end quote. So you have a link between Judaism, Freemasonry, and communism as all going against the Catholic Church. Absolutely. No question about it. In the New York Jewish National Day, December 14, 1935, it says, quote, the public schools must be clear of Christmas carols and other Christmas influence. We want all this Christmas propaganda stopped, end quote. We read in the New York Jewish paper, Freeheit, on January 10, 1937, quote, according to the Jewish religion, the Pope is the enemy of the Jewish people by the very fact that he is head of the Catholic Church. The Jewish religion is opposed to Christianity and to the Catholic Church in particular, end quote. And they also have uh, watchdog groups like the ADL. They were caught out in San Francisco spying on the people and so forth. Uh, so uh, we don't do them any charity by saying they're, they're doing a great job. And, and this is ridiculous. They've rejected Jesus Christ. And our Lord says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's why they don't worship the one true God. And that was very clear by what our Lord said to them in John chapter 8, where he said, if Abraham were your, God were your father, you would receive me. But God is not your father. Your father is the devil, John 8, 44. So uh, they don't worship the one true God. It's a, you know, this is ridiculous. Uh, so we have to hope, and it's my charity. I have no hatred. It's not based on emotion. This is facts. I'm bringing this very clear what I'm stating here. And I, I truly wish for the conversion of all of Jewish people to the one true faith. I wish for eternal life for all of them. But uh, they have to be exposed to what they're doing and how they're attacking the one true church and God himself, the true God, and helping bring about this antichrist kingdom and world. Uh, that's what's happening. You know, and uh, basically this gets back to the prophecy, prophecy of Isaiah. He said, in, in Isaiah it says, Woe to that sinful nation of people loaded with iniquity, a wicked seed, and gracious children. They have forsaken the Lord. They have blasphemed the Holy One of Israel. When you stretch forth your hands, I will turn away my eyes from you. When you multiply prayer, I will not hear your hands are filled with blood, Isaiah 1, 4, 15. And this, of course, refers to the New Testament, Matthew 27, 25, where the Jews said, let his blood be upon us and, and our children. So uh, that's, that's what we have now. Uh, but they are definitely coming to power, there's no question about it. And uh, also, if you look on products now to show the, the amount of power that they're getting, uh, you'll see many your, almost all your products, uh, the letters U, the letter U on your product stands for the Union of Orthodox Rabbis, and the K, you'll see on many of your products, stands for kosher. And uh, this is basically a, a food tax. It's put on companies. From what I've read and been told, uh, these companies have to pay for these symbols to be put on their products, and if they don't put them on their products, they'll be boycotted. And it's like hundreds of millions of dollars each year the, the uh, rabbis take in uh, from this. It's unbelievable. So um, they can't even use their products in the distribution chain without putting the U and K. Well, I don't know if they absolutely have to have it, but all I'm saying is that from what I've read and seen, they'll be boycotted if they don't do that. You know. Right. And, uh, now, going back to what all this Freemasonry is, is rooted in, it's rooted in the Jewish Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the Hebrew word for received tradition. The Jewish Kabbalah is a medieval Jewish book of occult philosophy and magic based on mystical interpretations of the Old Testament. The Kabbalah is important with, an, uh, with magicians, sorcerers, witches, Satanists, as well as Masonic philosophers. 
And all the things that I just mentioned that are rooted, that talked about Freemasonry, gets back and is rooted in the Jewish Kabbalah. The book Morals and Dogma has 65 pages dealing with the Kabbalah. Page 741 of Morals and Dogma says this, quote, Mason raises search for light. That search leads directly back to the Kabbalah, end quote. Page 770 has a picture of the Kabbalah. Pike also said, quote, all the Masonic organization secrets and symbols are borrowed from the Kabbalah. So the importance of what I'm saying is I've shown throughout this video that their main attack has been against the Catholic Church. And people have to do the right thing in these critical times because the time is running out. You know, brother, we want to thank you very much for what you've uh, shown us. It's uh, staggering, the amount of information, not just what was in this tape, but also what was in the, the other tape, Biblical End Times Prophecies. And it's clear that we're in a very, very critical time in, in our lives that the decision to follow Christ is now more important than we ever thought before. Absolutely. Thank you.